Okay, in this tutorial for new Blender users, I'm going to show you how to use cloth and create a bouncing effect, maybe like a trampoline effect, because it's not so straightforward. If you try and make a ball bounce through cloth, it usually just breaks all the way through, no matter what the settings are that you set over here. So I'm going to show you how I set this scene up, and let's take a look at the animation so you see what it does. So from the beginning, it's just very simple. The ball comes down, and it bounces back up. Right, so it's not perfect, you know, but it's, it kind of gives you an idea, and I assure you if you tweak with the settings, you can make the effect work pretty nice, all right? So let's see what I've done in the scene. So basically, I have this cube, and I have vertex groups set. So let's go look at the vertex groups. So in this case, these here are set at 1 for this group here on top, and then I'll do press Control i and I'll get the inverse, and these here though you don't see them, these are set at, I mean, sorry, let's do that again, let's see what that was. No, these are set at zero, so they're free to float. And then these all around the edge and then down on the bottom are set at one, though you can't see that. So I assign those to one. So that means the whole structure's set in place. And then when I came over here and created a cloth for it, I did a couple things. One, I have cloth and collision set. So when you create the cloth object, you have to come in here and you have to it'll be set like that so you have to grab group and then turn pinning on that way it uses the vertex group otherwise it won't know about those settings in here and then this can affect the speed of the simulation so I'll show you so let's run it and but if you were to do this just by itself and only have set those parameters like that that ball is going to zoom all the way through and it's not going to bounce back up and that's because I'm faking it completely so that's, of course that's what computer graphics you have to do you got to fake things all the time so I'll show you how I did it so instead of worrying about it breaking all the way through what I do is I come over here to this scene frame and down here notice gravity set at nine negative nine point eight one all right so it, what happens is, is it, I'm going to use my up and down arrow keys and if you notice, I'll go down to here, frame one, and I have my I have a keyframe set. By pressing I with your mouse hovered over this, it sets a keyframe and it turns it yellow. And I left the default setting gravity of not negative nine point eight meters per second squared. Okay, and so then I kind of eyeballed it, and I'm going to step through a frame at a time. So it's falling down, it's hitting here like this, and at some point in time. Let's see where the next keyframe is. There's the next keyframe at frame 17, and I, and I also set a keyframe there, so it's fixed at that location. Then I'm going to move to the next keyframe, which I have at frame 18. So one frame later, I've turned the acceleration in the positive direction up at 50 meters per second squared, because I want to counter out, counteract the acceleration of the ball moving down so quickly, like that. And then up here at the top, at the last keyframe, I just set it back to 9.8, so it's still going up, but slowly, and that's just to counterbalance this keyframe back here. So all I've done is I've set keyframes on the gravity settings, and I have, and it had nothing to do with all those individual parameters of the cloth object itself. You know, you can come in here, if you don't change those gravity settings, and you change this stickiness, the permeability, I mean, this states that if you, you know, chance that the particle will pass through the mesh, well, it must only apply to particles, because if you do regular objects, it always passes through the mesh. You know, it may, I think maybe once I figured out how to do it otherwise, but never had any luck beyond then. So, and then the other thing you had to do is on this object, notice it's got the green around it. That's because I came over here and I made sure I set that to active. All right. That can be a little confusing sometimes because green represents active as far as rigid body, but it also tells you if it's in a group so you don't know if it's one or the other the way you have to find that is you just come over to the physics tab down here and you see if rigid body dynamics is actually set up which you can see it is here all right and then you have what will those let's go full screen let's see and there it is and let me see I'm just resetting the frame, but if you if you come in and time the frame, then you can actually make it look pretty nice. And the way you can actually do that is you come over here, you grab another window, and you grab a copy of the graph editor. And within the graph editor here, here's my setting. There's Z, purple, lavender. That's 
in that's for Z for my keyframes that I have set and if you want to modify that I can press A in here and then I can just press B just like red editing and I could box that in and grab those keyframes like that and maybe I want to stop it early so maybe I'll press G X and maybe I'll just move it back like a frame like that and now I've modified those all those for these those keyframes there and let's run it let's see what difference it makes I have to start from the beginning let's see so you can see it doesn't go doesn't go quite as far so and just by adjusting all those you can create a very convincing effect of bouncing a trampoline okay well I hope that helps you with your own projects and I'll see you in the next lesson